Hi, Dove. I'm here when you are. Okay, so that will just be a few minutes. Um, what we're going to do is, um, I'll kind of um, make a kind of a start to the, the evening. And then I'm going to actually pass it on to you to kind of introduce yourself um, after I give a kind of an initial few words. And then um, basically the idea is that we have, it'll be the official time is 19 minutes. But I don't have a problem going over. We can go over if you've got, if you want to, if you've got something of value you want to give, then that's great. If we're having a great conversation, there's no problem with that. But the produced version will be 19 minutes. In other words, um, this is the live version, but if there's a produced version afterwards, we're only going to take 19 minutes. So make sure that within that, you condense your good stuff, and then we can have general stuff around the outside if that's okay. We can cut it sure. out. Sure. Okay. So um, I'm just seeing that. Uh, you're on here. We've got Chofit here. We've got Jamal coming on. We've got Norman. So we've got people. If you um, if you want to put in the comments uh, where you're uh, watching from, that will be quite interesting from us uh, for us. Um, so put in the comments. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. Um, if you want to do a watch party, that might be quite nice too. So just put a watch party and invite all your friends and whoever. I reckon uh, with it being midday in New Zealand, um, then you know, there might be more people possibly watching from there. We've got in the UK, it's 11 p.m. at night. And mm. uh, you know, there's a lot of people coming in here watching from Israel as well. So that's one o'clock in the morning. So, um, so we've got people coming from Toronto. We've got people coming from the UK. So let's just give them a few more minutes and we will start. So we're going to start at, uh, let's see, okay. Yeah, there's the time. So um, I'm gonna give it another minute and then and then we can start. Um, we'll see where we go from there. How's that sound? Yeah, that's good, let's do it. Okay, so one more minute and then we'll be off. How's the how's the situation? Are you well? How's the situation with your family over there? Yeah, we're thankfully we're doing all right. We are trying to figure out the new normal, but we are working yeah. on that slowly. Um, my parents are one minute's walk away, and we're not allowed to visit them, which is obviously frustrating. But they're doing okay, thankfully as well. And um, yeah. Strange times. Okay, so we've got Amy Murrells on uh, watching us. Hi, and Amy. Ariel Asaraf from Belgium. Okay, so right. off we go. So um, good evening, everybody, if you're in the UK. Good uh, morning if you're in Israel. And good afternoon, I suppose, if you're in New Zealand. Um, welcome to the virtual conference live talks with myself, Dov Ben Yaakov Kurtzman. We have uh, a gem of a guest on for you tonight. We had Amy Murrell earlier this evening. We have an amazing guy for you now, Ben Sedley. Now, Ben is from New Zealand, not um, a stranger to disasters. If you remember, Ben, um, you were kind of on the front line trying to get me out there um, when there was the mm -hmm. terrorist attacks uh, uh, last year. Um, so we've known each other for a while. We met in Spain at the uh, ACBS conference. And uh, ever since then, we've kind of been in touch. And uh, you brought out your book. I was one of the first who rushed to buy it. I actually bought two. Um, one was the North American edition and one was the, the British edition. So um, 
double fun there for me. So um, I'm going to actually invite you to introduce yourself because I find that um, I won't be able to do you as much justice as you can for yourself. But mainly what I want for you, this is not about me. This is not about us having a conversation. This is about us learning from you and experiencing from you what you can hand over to us in this um, this uh, troubling time for all the world, basically. We've got Avi Gorilli coming and watching. We've got James Hegarty. We've got Chava Erlinger from Manchester. So we've got a real good crowd coming in uh, tonight, staying up late to see you, wanting to know what you can um, hand over to us. We know that you are well uh, trained and experienced in working with teenagers. You actually wrote this self-help book, self book for teenagers. So I want you to talk a little bit about that. And um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over right now to Ben Sedley. Hello to you, Ben. Hi, Dav Tinakoto Tefano. Um, welcome to everyone all around the world. Welcome to Jim down in Dunedin. Um, where are you in New Zealand, by the way? Sorry to interrupt. So, no, no, so I'm in Wellington, New Zealand. That's the capital. And I'll correct you, I wasn't on the front line last March when the massacre happened. That was down in Christchurch. Um, I contacted you because I was trying to think of what I could do to help people down in Christchurch. Um, yes, you're right. New Zealand's had a rough time over the last few years, but right now everybody's having a rough time. and. New Zealand's having a rough time right now, but thankfully we haven't got as bad as some other places and we're in total shutdown right now. I'm coming to you live from my son's bedroom because it's the quietest place in the house. Right. Um, what does total shutdown mean in New Zealand? It means a different things in different places. Just give us a kind of an idea of what that means for you guys. So we are in New Zealand, you, everybody needs to be at home. You may go for a walk around the block, but you're not allowed to go drive anywhere unless you're going to an essential service, which is a supermarket or a pharmacy or a doctor's appointment. Um, the government's listed who the essential services are, which are people who are keeping the country going, but um, shops are all closed, takeaway bars are all closed. We are trying to figure out how to survive. What a new How does that affect is? you personally as, I mean, you're, you're an acceptance and commitment therapy specialist, I would say, and you know, you're going through this, you're with your family. How do you, how do you get through the day? So I, my job at the moment, I work three days a week private practice and then three, two days a week, I am home doing childcare. Um, you've caught me on one of my non-work days. So thankfully my wife is around to watch the children, um, keep them out of this room at the moment. Um, I am doing all my sessions via Zoom or FaceTime as much as technology holds up. Turns out the entire country is at home watching Netflix right now. So technology isn't going as good as we'd like. Um, Wi-Fi is going a bit slower than we'd like but I am doing my best to keep the therapy going, keep supporting people during my normal regular therapy hours. There's some amazing, lots of amazing people reaching out, doing amazing things and doing extra volunteering. Um, at the moment, I'm keeping to my regular therapy hours with my regular clients. Um, and how do you cope personally? You, know, you wake up in the morning, we're basically, our freedom has basically been taken from us, albeit temporarily, we hope, but, you know, we're, we're all in um, isolation. We're all in confinement. We can't go out and do things as freely as we used to. How does that affect you personally? Um, it sucks, right? It's... um affect me personally it's i am trying to figure out how to make this work i am mostly enjoying the extra time with my wife and my kids and 
three kids locked up in the house all day can be pretty tiring as well. So we're busy trying to think of different things we can do with them. Lots of, um, we had a fun go noodle dance party yesterday. You know, trying to figure out how we can do it. It is knowing why we do it makes it possible. I think for me, knowing that this is essential, that us doing this will save lives, will reduce the length of time of shutdown and restrictions. That makes it all feel worthwhile. It's like, okay, of course I don't want to do this, but knowing why we do it is what helps for me. Right. Um, this uh, virtual conference, which I've nicknamed Corona Views, was opened up basically um, by Tom Tubo. And from his experience with Ebola in Africa, he brought a lesson for us um, while we were talking and said that we have to be very conscious and be aware of um, the relationship between parents and children at this time when we're kind of cooped up in um, you know, a closed in space for a long time and no doubt um, it's going to get on each other's nerves at one point in the game. You being um, somebody who's written a self-help book for teenagers, um, no doubt realize that this kind of thing might happen also. Tom gave it in a kind of a warning that we shouldn't let that go down the slippery slope into um, adverse childhood uh, experiences. How would you advise us and the people that are watching here that have teenagers at home who might be um, in all sorts of different uh, stages in their adolescent life and it's just not suitable for them at this point to be um, you know closed in with their parents all day and all night so how you know yeah. what kind of things do you envision what kind of you know ways do you think we should um, tackle that as parents? Is that, it's a big challenge. It's something that's been on my mind a lot. I'm going to start by saying I, I'm in the house with my eight year old, six year old and four year old. I don't have teenagers. Um, so please take everything I say with lots of grains of salt. I do work with teenagers a, a lot. I didn't really get to say it before, but I wrote the book which is, isn't, when you buy it, it actually reads forward, not backwards. Um, <laughs> it's cool stuff. It sucks, accepting yeah. what you can't and committing to what you can. And as Dov mentioned, there's a North American version of it. Yeah. Um, it's the same book inside with a different cover. Um, we'll put that in the <laughs> notes, by the way, with a, a link awesome. to um, your site to buy it. Thank you. Um, I was just putting that in there to say, I haven't got any magic, amazing answers, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot. And the thing which I've, the main thing I've been thinking about for me as a parent of smaller children, which I think really applies for parents of older children as well, is role modeling. Is what our children and our teenagers are gonna learn by what they're seeing right now. And we can have all these plans and things we want to say to our kids. And those are important sometimes. We need to be able to have discussions at age-appropriate levels about what's going on. But for me, how the thing that's really been on my mind is how do I role model kindness? How do I role model caring for the people who are in my house, understanding when things are difficult, remembering to actually ask them how they're doing, how do I remember to care for people who I can't physically be in touch with right now? Who, thinking about who tries, who should I be sending messages to? Who should I be caring about? Um, so that one way I'm trying to do my role modeling. One way I'm trying to do my role modeling is by limiting my own exposure to the news right now. Right. Um, in yeah, New it's Zealand, constant, the, it's, it's constant bombardment everywhere, isn't it? The, the repeat it's constant of, bombardment. And, and this, I think, can, you know, is from the point of view of constant bombardment, puts our brains into 
um, vigilant, hyper vigilant mode all the time because it thinks it's a new thing coming in again and again and again, and it's just the repeat news, really, isn't it? Well, it, there is new things coming, and they're all things that we can't do anything about, and they're terrifying. I feel really worried when I, every time I read the news, and I need to know enough about the world to know what's going on. Um, in New Zealand, early afternoons is when the Prime Minister gives her updates on how things are and what the new plans are. But mostly, I want to spend most of my time thinking about what are the things that I can do something about. Right. I can't do something about what's happening in Italy right now. My heart goes out for everyone in Italy and Spain and France and UK and, and I'm feeling terrified about you know what's about to happen in Syria and refugee camps around the world and of course the US. Um, and everywhere else I haven't mentioned. And, 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 us, and us being part of the ACBS community, we actually know people in most of these countries, don't we? Absolutely. And, you know, I'm talking to people in different countries or following their Facebook feeds and feeling really worried for them and lots and lots of love and caring sending out to them. And at the same time, thinking about, well, what can I do? Right. What are the things that I can focus on right now? I can't do anything right now to help people in. In Italy, I can do something right now to help my family. I can do something to help. I can send messages out to people I care about, let them know I'm thinking of them. I can make donations to charities that are doing some of this amazing frontline work. I've yesterday I was donating to Women's Refuge because I feel incredibly worried about those people who are trapped in homes they're not safe in right now. Um, and sending extra love and caring out to anyone out there who isn't feeling safe in your own home right now. Um, and thinking about what can I do from here? What can I do in terms of other things that I care about? I value, you know, one of my other values, value people, but also I value creativity and how do I make sure there's time for me to play some guitar or do some writing how do I make sure I still get some exercise in? How do I make sure I'm getting time just to sit and talk to each of my children and hear how they're doing? How do I make sure there's time where Geraldine and I are actually just connecting, not just focusing on what needs to be done to get through the next few hours. Um, so it's that real balance of a whole lot of things that I've always cared about and now the way that I care about them, the actions that I can do right now is changing. So I need to say I still value the same things. I value the environment and we've just found out there's no recycling in Wellington for the next month. So thinking about how can I manage that? What, how would I go about saving things till after this crisis is over? What can I do? Thinking about here's what I value, the way that I used to work towards that value isn't available to me now. What can I do instead? How can I still take a step, even if it's a much smaller step towards the things that matter to me. Wow, so I'm hearing if I, if I could just kind of process that, what you were saying, because there's a lot, a lot of value in there, what you were saying. So basically what I heard was, first of all, divide what's in your control and what's not in your control. There's a lot of things that are not in our control, but there's a lot of things that are in our control. And Amy was saying when she was on earlier that even though she found sometimes that she, you can get into that closed, freezing, collapsing kind of mode. One of the things that she talked about was opening up, um, even if you have to force yourself in a way to open up and start doing things and start maybe even that committed action. And I heard a lot of committed action from you there saying, look, I have values. There are things that are important to me in this life. Um, I used to maybe uh, materialize them and fulfill them in different ways. But now, because of the situation we're in, I can still have the same values. I can still fulfill them. But the actual way that I fulfill them might be different from what I did before. And so um, the idea here is that there's a lot of doing, there's a lot of focusing on what's in your control. There's a lot of focusing on fulfilling those values, even though at the same time you mentioned um, there's a lot of fear out there that 
of fear. And, and here also, there's a lot of, you know, scariness. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of concern of what's going to happen. But it's not, we've not, we don't, it doesn't stop you from continuing to do, taking that committed action and doing things um, that are important to you. Would that, would that kind of sum it up? That's a great summary, yeah. So it's very hard, it's very hard for all of us. I think what is incredible um, is that we're all going right around the world, doesn't matter where it is now, it's completely around the world yeah, now. It's totally, these plans, a lot of grieving going on right now. Grieving and acceptance. So we have a technical problem. Hold on a second. Are you there, Ben? Uh, no, sir, yeah. Okay, so we had we've got a bit of a technical problem with the internet. Are you? Can you hear me? I'm back. Can you hear? Right, you're back. We're back. So yeah, you said there's oh, a lot sorry. of grieving going on just now, yeah. worldwide grieving. Um, and and yeah, it's incredible. Worldwide grieving, also just that individual grieving, individual grieving. How how do we how do we how do we cope with that individual grieving at the moment? What what can we do? Be sad. You say, oh yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. I was looking forward to that trip or that party or that event or that seeing those people or being able to get out and do all those things or whatever it was and say, I feel sad about that. I don't need to, and being sad about it is important. It's acknowledging where we are right now. One of the hard things that our brains like to do is problem solve and tell us that we should be somewhere else and we should be doing that. And we can only take steps from where we are right now, not from where our mind tells us. So that's what we're working on right now. I'd love to be doing more things. I'd love to be doing different things. I'd love to be somewhere else. And right now, this is where I am. So what can I do? So acknowledging our feelings I'm hearing there, just kind of acknowledging what the facts are, acknowledging the truth that, yeah, I would rather be doing something else, but it's just not possible right now. And that might be very hard, might be very difficult for me, might be very disappointing, might be very frustrating, might make me even angry. It might mm -hmm. make me even scared of than usual, but the situation is that's the way it is. And, and, I, and I, I feel all these things. I was talking to someone earlier today and it's not about trying to you know, make yourself so busy that you don't come into contact with these things because you know, at the end of the day, you'll put your head down in the pillow and it all come rushing back to you possibly. So mm -hmm. just, just understanding yeah. that we have to have a little bit of kindness towards ourselves as well and say, look, yeah, you know, even if I slow down a little bit, even if I just take that 10 minutes and sit and come into contact with these thoughts and feelings and say, you know, yeah, just like what you're saying, I'm, I'm feeling sad at the moment or upset. And noticing that acceptance is a really active thing. It's not a passive resignation. It's this is how it is. What do I want to do? How can I take a step from where I am right now? Um, and that can be a real challenge. It is really challenging right now, and we can do it. We got this. Is there any mindful kind of exercise or some other type of experiential thing that we can that you can show us or we can learn from you at this point? What what we can do? I'm going to try something really simple right now. So I'm going to ask everyone. Is to close your eyes or pick a quiet spot to look at and just bring to mind three people you can think of either in your house or in your world maybe you three people that need some extra checking in with extra caring right now bring those people to mind and think this is where i am right now how can I send them some extra caring, some extra love right now? What do I need to do? And if you're one of those people in that three, 
What do you need to feed them? If it's someone in your house, what do they need? If it's someone outside your house, how can you best message them? Let them know that you're in, they're in your heart still. Just bring them to mind and choose a committed step right now. These people matter to me and here's what I'm going to do right now. That was beautiful and, and, I, and I really um, identify with that because as it happens, I'm alone in my house at the moment, so um, mm. I don't have a problem with that usually, but you know, when you're forced to be alone, then you, you do feel it. Um, also, it's coming up uh, to uh, the Jewish holiday of Passover very soon. And uh, it looks like mm. they'll be spending that alone as well. And what I found is my next door neighbor um, has called me a few times, and even though there's nothing, uh, you know thank god i'm i'm well and there's nothing wrong with me but they keep checking in on me um asking me if i need anything and they're willing to prepare me things for passover if i need it but just these phone calls um just to know that you're in the thoughts of somebody is very very powerful for that feeling that you're not alone that there's somebody thinking about you that you're might be on your own but you're not lonely and i think that um exercise that you brought us there is is something that contributes helping people not to be lonely. Yeah, we got we got each other, even when we haven't got physical contact. Beautiful. Ben Sedley, um, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I reached out to you. You're away on the other side of the world. Technology in this case has been amazing just to connect us. Um, I wish you and your family um, to stay safe and be well through this crisis and that we should all um, come out the other side um, uh, safe and well. And I really, really appreciate um, you taking the time to come on and talk to us uh, today. Thank you very much, Dov. Haksamaf to you. Thank you very much to everyone who's tuning in right now. And wherever you are, know that you're not alone. And we're all thinking about you. Thanks Take a care. lot, Ben. Take care. Bye now. Okay, everybody, just, um, just to finish off, tomorrow morning, as in all mornings, 11 o'clock a.m., we have the Total Mind Fitness Workout, where we bring all these lessons we're learning into a workout, 11 a.m. UK time. Please join me on Facebook Live, and we'll get this uh, kickoff at 11 a.m., we have a wonderful um, lineup for you uh, this week. Um, just see where it is, just so you know what we've got. So we've got tomorrow uh, Yori Gadron, um, an expert in vagal breathing and other uh, crisis te uh, techniques. We have on Tuesday um, Timothy Gordon from Toronto in Canada, a social worker that mixes act with yoga. It should be amazing to hear from him. On Wednesday, uh, we have Russell Colts. Tune in for Russell Colts, self-compassion. Wow, compassion-focused therapy. That should be really helpful for us. And then on Thursday, we're going over to Italy to Nani Presti, and we'll hear what's actually really going on in Italy and uh, how they're dealing with everything there. And that should um, finish off the week for us regarding this um, virtual conference live talks. We're going to be going on for about three weeks every day almost, so um, thank you very much for joining in. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share, don't forget to comment and uh, see you uh, tomorrow. Have a good day.